The second law of thermodynamics is pretty sacred territory for almost all areas of science. It can be used to describe everything from chemical reactions to black hole mechanics, and has even been argued to be the reason that time only flows in one direction. What is the second law? Put simply, it states that the entropy of a closed system never decreases. As an example, when you put an ice cube in water, the water cools down and the ice cube heats up, and never the other way around. But is the second law always true? Can we come up with a system that violates it? Let's consider two identical particles, which each have a low energy state with zero energy, and a high energy state with energy one half epsilon. Now, couple these particles to an energy source slash sink, called a heat bath, so that they can draw in energy and give up energy randomly. So in all, there are four possible states, one with total energy zero, one with total energy epsilon, and two with total energy one half epsilon. Now, we can use the formula for entropy that I talked about in a previous video, where omega is the multiplicity, or in other words, the number of states corresponding to a given total energy. So the states with total energy zero and epsilon will have zero energy, while the state with one half epsilon will have total entropy kb log two. But wait, we have the same number of high entropy states as low entropy states. If our system randomly exchanges energy with the heat bath, as we would expect, that means that we have a 50% chance of measuring the system in the high entropy state, and a 50% chance of measuring it in a low entropy state. Clearly, the entropy can decrease, and we violated the second law, right? Well, we have to remember that statistical mechanics, which is what we used for this two-particle system, is not the same thing as thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is concerned with very large-scale systems, such as fluids or gases with 10 to the 20-some particles in them, whereas statistical mechanics is meant to bridge the gap between the exact physical models and these large-scale systems where the exact calculations become impossible. So how does this story change when we add more and more particles? Keeping with the two level particles, let's generalize to n of them. For ease of calculation, we'll normalize the energy gap for each particle so that the high energy level is given by 1 over n times epsilon, and the energy will be gained or lost in units of this amount. So say we have m units of energy in our system. The multiplicity will then be given by the total number of ways that these m units can be distributed among our n particles, which we can write in a nice compact form using the binomial coefficient n choose m. Now we can just plot the values of the multiplicity for all possible values of m and different total numbers of particles and see what happens. What we see is that there's a sharp peak around m equals n over 2, which is our highest entropy state. We can also notice that as n gets larger, this peak gets sharper and sharper, meaning that our higher entropy states are more localized around this n over 2 state. But how do we see that the second law comes out of this? Well, since we're assuming that our system will randomly give or take energy from the heat bath, that means that every state is just as probable as every other state. So, if we see that there are more states corresponding to high entropies than low entropies, then that means that the entropy will tend to be maximized. As an example, let's just take n to be 1000. We can see by the plot that the main peak is around the range m equals 450 to m equals 550. So let's just add up the total number of states in the tails and compare that to the total number of states in the peak. What we find is that even though the peak is very narrow, only corresponding to about one-tenth of our total energy states, the total multiplicity of states in the peak is about a thousand times that of the states in the tails. This tells us that it is way more likely to find the system in one of the high entropy states localized around the peak than any of the low entropy states in the tails. In other words, when we bring the system into contact with the heat bath, the entropy will tend to maximize. 
In fact, this only becomes more true the more particles we add. For n equals 10,000, it is about 1 million times more likely to find the system in a state which is part of the much sharper peak. As one could imagine, for systems with, say, n equals 10 to the 23rd, the likelihood of finding the system in any state other than the highest entropy states is so astronomically small it might as well just be zero. So, while it is true that the second law of thermodynamics is technically only an approximation from the statistical point of view, for any reasonably sized system, we can take it as a law of nature. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like it, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave a comment down below.